Personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Coupon rate, current yield, yield to maturity, and market price for bond issued at a discount. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problem tab, and the 11200 coupon rate, current yield, YTM, and market price for discount bond tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool. Practice problems typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. Bond information on the left, we've got the par value at 1,000. We've got the annual interest payment. So these are not semi-annual. We're saying the interest payments happen on an annual basis at $70. The market price is at the $840. That amount being less than the par value, which means it's issued at a discount. Meaning if we were purchasing the bond, we'd be paying the 840 for it. We're gonna get a series of payments of $70 on a yearly basis until maturity, which is 10 years into the future. And then at the end, at the maturity, we'll also get the 1,000 back, which is the face amount of the bond. Let's first calculate the coupon rate, which is basically the rate used to get to that $70. So if we got the $70, we can get to the coupon rate, which would be the 70 divided by the 1,000. That giving us then the 7%, 7% coupon rate, seven times the 1,000 is the $70 that we're gonna be getting on an annual basis in this case. We can then calculate the current yield. The current yield now being the $70 that we're gonna get on a yearly basis, but we're not going to compare it to the par value because that's not what we paid for it, but instead we paid the $840 for it. So when we're trying to figure out basically what our return is, a quick and easy back of the envelope, as they say, calculation would be 70 divided by the 840 or about 8.33. However, that's not completely precise because of course, We've got two things happening. We've got a series of payments at $70 that are gonna be extending out for 10 years. And then we also have that $1,000 that we're going to be receiving uh, at the end or at maturity, which also throws off kind of this one yearly payment kind of calculation for one, one time frame. So we could then get into some other calculations such as the market price calculation and uh, the yield to maturity, for example. So when we're thinking about the yield to maturity, we could use a rate function such as this function in Excel to calculate it. Oftentimes you might kind of try to back into it because we've practiced a few times how to think about how to calculate the market price of the bond. And if you use Excel, you can use Excel to kind of back into what the yield to maturity would be. Let me show you how that might work. So for example, the when we calculate the price of a bond, we're gonna take the present value of the stream of payments, in this case, $70 that we're gonna be receiving every year for 10 years. And then we're gonna take the present value of the face amount that we're gonna get at maturity, that being the $1,000 in this case that we're gonna receive at maturity in 10 years. And we discount that back using the market rate, which we don't know because that's the yield to maturity that would give us the market price. We could then assume in Excel, making a, a number, just picking a number like 5% or something, for example, to start with and calculate based on that rate in this cell, doing our present value calculations, and then use trial and error, basically asking Excel, would you just use brute force to change this number until you get to a number that makes the result what we need it to be, which is 840, the market price. And that's a way that you kind of back into some calculations using kind of an algebraic method in that you're looking for the unknown but instead of solving the algebra because we're using functions here which makes it a little bit more complicated we're just telling excel do it by trial and error just keep on plugging in numbers to x the unknown until you figure the result out so that's one way you can approach it here or any other kind of problem where you have a similar kind of thing where the unknown is somewhere within the function. If we were to calculate that, we'd say the present value then, present value of this stream of payments, if we did this in Excel, would be the rate, the rate uh, would be the unknowns, so we'd be picking this cell, which we could start off with a guess, 
And then we got the number of periods, which would be 10. It's not semi-annual, so we don't have to multiply it times two. It's an annual comma, the number of payments. So the payment would be $70 per year. And then we've got the present value of the face amount, which would be the rate, the cell, comma, number of periods, which would be the 10, comma, comma, to get to the future value, which would be the 1,000. That would give us adding them up, the market price, and then again, if I just guessed a number down here, we can ask Excel, change this number, the unknown, like the X, and change it until it fits. Or we can use the rate function. So you can see in these two calculations here that the rate is what we're looking for. So we're, that's the function. So we can look for a function that uses the rate, the rate function here, and we could say equals the rate, the number of periods, the number of periods would then be the 10, comma the payment the payment would then be the seventy dollars comma the present value you got to have a negative that's why it's a little bit confusing here the present value would be the price the 840 comma the future value the amount that we're going to get in the future would be the one thousand dollars and that should get us to the rate here which would be the yield to maturity in this case because these are not semi-annual bonds these are simply annual bonds so we don't have to multiply it by two if they were semi-annual we'd have to get that rate for the semi-annual or six month period and then multiply it basically by two now once you get this number if you were to use this rate function to calculate this number based on this data i would double check it by doing what we did up top to make sure that you, you do your present value calculations here to calculate the price. And that's kind of like your check figure, right? So if I take my market price to figure out the yield to maturity, then I'm gonna plug that yield maturity back into my functions up top to make sure I get back to the market price, giving me a bit of, of security. You can also visualize this by, by mapping this out uh, in terms of the periods into the future. And this gives you a much better understanding, I believe, of how these functions are working, these present value functions are working, because these kind of seem kind of magical. The reason we can do these two are because the interest payments are an annuity formula, and the face value is the present value of one formula. Now, that happens to be two things that are kind of uniform in nature, two streams of future payments that are uniform that we can break out into an annuity and present value of one. But uh, you can imagine situations like budgets, for example, where you're just gonna map out what you think the cash flows are happening in the future, and then just one year at a time, discount them back to the current time frame. So you could do that with a bond as well. So we could say, here's our annuity, which from periods one to 10, we're gonna get $70. 70 times 10 is $700 we're going to get throughout the 10 year time frame in an annuity format on an annual basis the face amount the 1000 we're going to get at the end of year 10 if i add those up we've got an annuity up to year 10 where we get that lump sum plus the interest payment then we can present value this on one one period at a time meaning this $70 if i take the present value rate is going to be then the market rate yield to maturity the 9.55 comma number of periods is now one bringing it back one period at a time it's not a payment calculation that's why we got two commas future value would be the 70 that 70 discounted back at 9.55 percent for one year 64 70 discounted back two years at the 9.55 58 70 discounted back three years at the 9.5553 and so on and then we've got this lump sum payment at the end including the face amount that we are receiving that we're going to bring back at the 9.55 for 10 years 430 if we add them up then we should get once again to that 840 the market price once again so these are great tools to kind of work through the the time value of money calculations and work them backwards and forwards, be able to calculate uh, the, the rate over here, be able to kind of back into the rate if you so choose, can give you a good understanding and use of that goal seat function, which we do do in Excel. And then if you use the rate, use that to calculate the price, do it with the formulas an annuity formula and present value of one, and then map out the actual stream of payments that happen in the future, which is actually a, a tool that can be applied more 
universally, even if we don't have something that fits right into like an annuity or present value of one, two nice neat streams of payments, but rather have ununiform payments over years into the future, which we can then use this tool to discount back. Uh, useful tool to understand and the better you can visualize what is happening, the better you can use this actual information for decision making.